Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. Well, it's so easy to talk about hunting this time of year, but man, fishing is uh, just starting to get really good again as well, too. And we're going to talk fishing up on the Rainy River and Lake of the Woods right now with Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism. Joe, how you doing? Hey, Brad, I'm doing good, man. Happy fall, baby. I can't, I can't believe it's finally here. Now, I just want time to slow down just a little bit. I could try to the, stretch the fall out. Now, man, the smell, the leaves, the migration, the hunting, the fishing. I mean, it isn't, isn't October an incredible month? I love it. Uh, I love it. It's probably the best month of the year. And uh, I'm looking forward to hunting and fishing up at Lake of the Woods this year. We're, we're working on a trip to get up there later this month, hoping we can get that nailed down here and uh, and probably do some food. We'll probably go up to the angle and do some fishing up at the angle. But I think we're going to have to fish the Rainy River while we're up there too, Joe. You got to give it a rip. I mean, I'll tell you what, here's the deal. There's been shiners, emerald shiners. You know, they make that annual run up the Rainy River and that's what's What's going on? And when you talk about that fall run in the rainy is that those shiners are coming up, clouds of them. You can see them on your graph, clouds of them. And then what happens is those walleyes are always close behind. I mean, the, the walleyes follow the bait. So this is the, rainy run, the, the, the fall run on the rainy river, and it's going on right now. And uh, there's there's a lot of fish being caught. And uh, you know what? Uh, every day is a little bit different. Sometimes those fish are holding for a few days in the same spot. Sometimes they're moving through, and and you just have to intercept them. Some of the Some of the techniques, people look for bait. You know, looking for the shiners on your graph. Um, otherwise, I suggest doing a milk run. You know, you, you try one stretch of the river. You try a few different spots. If you're not getting her done, you can either, you know, boat upstream or, or put the boat on a trailer or really make a, a long, you know, a, a longer drive and try a whole different stretch. But, you know, I, I, I just sometimes, Brett, I see people going out, uh, you know, across from the resort area on Wheeler's Point. They go with that orange sock and they, they yeah. anchor up and they're sitting there all day and they're hoping those fish come through and, I'll dig it if they do a good deal. And if they don't come through, I'm like, man, I, I think I would have moved a few times anyway, you know? Right. Well, I suppose you, you figure people are going in and out of the store. You can stand by the door to catch them on their way through. But uh, sometimes they're already in there and you got to go That's find it. them. You got to go find them in the, you know, in the beer aisle or something. <laughs> you go find well, you know, so, but, but I'll tell you, though, you know, th those fish are moving a lot, you know, in that river. And um, it, it, if the fish are moving, that could be a really good technique, just anchoring up on a, a good edge an eddy you know a point a hole i mean all those all those areas are actually pretty darn good spots to, to set up and you know most people are jigging this time brett but if you're not finding fish i have no problem pulling a crankbait against the current and you know either pulling along an edge or um in some cases you, you know a flat sometimes they're just laying out in a flat if you get a flat that's seven to twelve seven to fifteen feet of water you just you see those fishes laying on the bottom kind of spread out in the little sand rifts. What happens in a river sometimes is that with that current going down, you know, you got little rifts in the sand. The sand kind of comes up and it goes down and it comes up and it goes down. So when you go over that area with your sonar, the sonar catches the two humps of the sand, but then that whole little depression in between those two little humps, even if it's just a, a one foot depression, for instance, that the sonar doesn't see that because it catches the two humps. So those, that's where those walls are laying out of the current. You can't see them. So sometimes you pull cranks through a flat like that and you start whacking fish. You're like, what the heck's wrong with my electronics? Well, nothing's wrong. It's just that they're laying in those little sand rifts. It's hard to see them. So if you were going to pull cranks, Joe, would you do what we did last spring and, you know, run a, a shallow diving crank with a three-way and a weight? I think that's one great way to go. You can always, you can go up and down with the structure like we did. Remember how we, we'd slide up to the shoreline and it'd be a little bit shallower. And, and then, you know, we'd slide off that bank, just kind of exploring, looking for fish. Hey, let's slide out and there's a hole coming up. There's 18 feet. Let's slide off that bank and go, let's go pull through that hole. When you do that with that weight on there, that three-way rig, you might have a, you know, two, three ounce weight off of a, you know, a, a one or two foot dropper, maybe a one foot dropper. And then, um, and then you have a six foot piece of mono or fluorocarbon with a shallow diving crankbait. And you can just almost work that almost like a bottom bouncer and a, a spinner, but you can just kind of pull that up, upstream and really work the, the current. Now, if you're in a flat area, now that's where you can pull a shad wrap or a husky jerk or a, you know, a, I, I like using those, a rip shad from, uh, uh, gosh, I forget the name of the company, but anyway, uh, uh, a rip shad. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, covering water is not a bad thing if you are not connecting and jigging. Now, if you find the fish, you know, they're in a certain area, you know, then you can, uh, you know, anchor up and whack them. But uh, a, lot, a lot of ways to get her done, you know what I mean? Acme. Reef runner rip shad? 
Yeah, a, a re, re rip shed. That's what it is. Yep, an acne re front rip shed. Yep. And that rip shed, I'll tell you, I, I should not tell anybody in case I ever fish against you in a tournament, but man, I'll tell you what, that, uh, that rip shed that's got that red head and that uh, kind of that shiny dark gold body. Ooh, that's a good one. If you were going to run a jig with plastic on it, you know, an artificial uh, with a jig, what would you, what would your first piece of plastic that you put on? What, I'd probably run a little bit heavier jig. And, you know, the, the current, I think, has gone a little bit. It's down now compared to what it was. So based on the current, you know what, I need a quarter ounce jig or a half ounce jig. It just depends on where you're in the river and what's happening. You just got to read the water. But I would use the lightest jig as I can, but I want to be able to stay down by the bottom. And then I personally, like, uh, I would use something like a, a chartreuse with the ribs on them. Um, to be honest with you right now, my first choice would be uh, like a a gold <laughs> yeah there you go right there yep that one with a paddle tail danny's got it is that a bee fishing or what is that a berkeley oh yeah bee fishing Bee yeah. yep bee fishing there you go we can hear you i, I, think, I'll turn I the think that's a great color i'll tell you the other one i like i like pink and you know and white on, on the rainy and then you know the other thing is oftentimes when i'm jigging in the fall i won't use any plastic at all what i'll use is i'll use a, you know an emerald shiner i'll use a live shiner if they have them um, I, I do like the shiner just because that's what's running up the river. And then what I'll do is, you know, my, my colors of jig, it's, it's stained water in the rainy river. So if, if anglers that are listening to this have fished the river, I'm not telling them anything that they don't know. But, you know, things like um, gold and pink, gold and orange. Um, they have this jig. It's like a Tom's Tackle has this jig. It's almost like a, a prism jig that has different angles to it. But that, that and gold and orange, gold and pink, um, they have one that's a, a gold a glow white strip and a pink strip. And I'll tell you, I love that jig. Uh, that's, a, that's kind of a go-to jig. And then either I'm gonna thread that jig on, so I, I put that jig hook through the mouth, out the gill, slide it all the way up to the jig head, and then put the point of the jig about halfway through that body of the shiner. Otherwise, this time of year, I will use a stinger hook. So I'll take a, you know, a stinger hook, all that is is a small treble hook with a, you know, a, a, two, a two or three inch piece of like fluorocarbon. And you just hook that over the hook of the jig. What that does then is when you hook your minnow through the, the mouth, you got that long emerald shiner hanging there. You can take that treble hook and stick that in the back uh, and just in front of the tail, you know, of, uh, of that shiner. And that way with those short bite and walleyes, you're going to hook those things with a, uh, with a treble hook that, with that stinger rig. Joe, uh, Joe Henry, our guest, Lake of the Woods Tourism. Joe, if you missed it, last week we had Ali Shakur on the show, and uh, he talked about some pretty interesting walleye research. You can watch it now on our YouTube channel about uh, the, the, the toxicity of blue-green algae and walleyes that live in it and if that toxicity can be transferred into the meat of that walleye and then caught by an angler and then transferred to the human from from that fish it's it's some it's some pretty wild stuff and uh he was a pretty neat guy to meet down at uh, the aglow uh conference in branson did you get a chance to talk to him down there joe i'll tell you what i spent a lot of time with ollie uh we we had many dinners together we hung out at some of the hospitality nights and uh and, and no i i had seen ollie uh, uh seen him speak at a a national professional angling association seminar and i was very impressed i also am facebook friends with him and i know he he fishes walleye tournaments but he's also a biologist and he fishes lake erie a lot which that's where i got my captain's license i fish a tournament there every year and so we have a lot in common and just a you know re really a nice guy and a very credible guy and just a passionate walleye angler just like i am you know he fishes multi-species too he ice fishes as well we we're talking about fishing some of the harbors um, my, my buddies who got charter boats on Lake Erie, they, they'll, they'll sometimes go and catch panfish in the harbors where their boats are normally staged in the summertime. And, and uh, he does the same thing. He knows those spots, you know, and he's dialed. He's dialed in. He's a great guy. But, yeah. you know, that topic you're talking about, that's one topic. Uh, it, it's very interesting, but think of the things he's working on. Very interesting stuff. Oh, man, uh, much smarter than I am. Just <laughs> hands down. No question about it. And the gear that who he's isn't? using. You know, well, hey, now. Um <laughs> But uh, fascinating guy, and I, you know, I was just uh, we got Brandon Butler on this week's show too, as well, Joe, on the full show, full podcast, and uh, I was just telling him just the people that that I've gotten to meet here in the last couple of years through a glow, uh, just some really neat people with some some really cool stories and uh, some interesting jobs in the outdoor field. Oh, Brandon, yeah, he's. I've known Brandon for a lot of years. R really sharp guy, very nice guy. Um, really also smarter than me. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> Danny, I'm not going to say too much. I think there's a trend. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> now, he's a really neat guy. I was glad to meet him, and I was glad that he was on the show with us and what they're doing with Raceline and some of the prairie restoration and the other efforts they're doing for renewable energy is, is fascinating. All right, Joe, if people want to plan a trip to Lake of the Woods, Northwest Angle, Rainy River, uh, yet this fall, or start thinking about ice fishing, what should they do? You know, best place uh, for information is our website, and that is Lake of the Woods MN. Hear more at SportingJournalRadio.com or wherever you get podcasts. Northern Minnesota's Walleye Factory is a year-round world-class fishing destination. The perfect getaway this summer is just a short drive to Lake of the Woods. Fish Big Traverse Bay, the Rainy River, or visit the unique Northwest Angle. To catch big fish, you have to go where the big fish are. Plan your trip to Lake of the Woods at lakeofthewoodsmn.com. That's lakeofthewoodsmn.com. 